This is the better seeing eye of a patient who is referred for cataract surgery from a distance. You can see that the center of the pupil and the center of the lens don't line up because she has an inferior zonular dialysis. When we dilate her and lie her on the table, we can see this large dialysis. The lens is uh, dislocated and tilted back a bit. There's some phagotinesis. And here I'm putting viscoelastic in that gap so that when I stain with vision blue, the vision blue doesn't run posteriorly. It'll act as a barrier and block that off. So here I'm staining with vision blue, which will help me see the edge of the rectus throughout the case. Uh, I'm displacing that with viscoelastic, and I'm going to start my capsulorexis. Uh, the lens is loose, as you can see here. Uh, and I'm going to try to center the capsulorexis on the center of the lens rather than the center of the pupil, as the lens is a bit dislocated and pulled to the right side of the uh, surgeon's uh, view here. Um, so here I'm uh, tearing the capsulorexis around very carefully. I want to make the uh, rexus opening large enough so that I can phaco this uh, very dense cataract uh, efficiently uh, without being hemmed in. But as I get to this area here, uh, the lens is tilted back a little bit, and you have to be very careful without counter-traction from zonules that the rexus doesn't run out. So this is now completed, and I'm going to want to place my capsule retractors. I use this 0.7 millimeter diving blade and angle downward at about 30 or 40 degrees. That matches the angle on the capsule retractor so that that retractor will come in uh, parallel uh, to the um, anterior capsule and end up uh, in the uh, recess or fornix of the capsule bag uh, rather than uh, pulling up on the anterior capsule, uh, which would be the case if the uh, paracentesis were uh, parallel to the iris. So by angling it down, it keeps the uh, lens in its physiologic position. Uh, I'll now go ahead and do a phaco chop technique. Uh, this is a very dense central nucleus. Uh, the capsule bag is supported by the capsule retractors, but you still want to be very careful uh, not to uh, stress the uh, capsule uh, and create a radial tear, which is easy to do when the uh, anterior capsule is being supported by these capsule retractors. And you want to be very careful not to uh, buzz the uh, elevated anterior capsule with the phaco tip because that will cause a radial tear and then you'll be uh, unable to use the capsule bag. Uh, the phaco here is a bit edited uh, to show the main uh, portions of what was done. I uh, created a few chops uh, to create quadrants and then pull the quadrants out of the bag, trying to stay in the uh, middle of the uh, pupil to avoid uh, hitting the uh, edge of the uh, capsular rexus with the phaco tip and causing a radial tear. Uh, so I uh, do my chops and bring the uh, quadrants up. Uh, in this case, there is a bit of an epinuclear uh, cortical shell that I'm going to remove with the uh, INA. Uh, and again, just bring this... Uh, out of the capsule bag centrally and aspirate it. Um, I think that uh, even though this was a very dense cataract, there was a thick cortical shell because this was a post vitrectomy cataract with a very dense central nucleus and the periphery was not quite as hard, which is one of the reasons I chose to uh, do uh, the type of chopping technique that I did here. Um, the uh, cortex cleaned up. And now I'm going to uh, place a Gore-Tex suture in the uh, eyelet of a Malugan modified Sioni CTR. Uh, this uh, CTR has like a pigtail end with an eyelet. And I can inject this into the capsule bag. Uh, and then when I inject this, I try to make it so that as I inject, the uh, eyelet will end up in the area where the zonular defect is because that's where we're going to suture this. We're going to suture this right in that area where the zonular defect is. I place two sclerotomies, two millimeters close to the limbus, connect those with a scleral groove that's about half thickness. I'll now use a 25 gauge forceps to um, retrieve each end of the Gore-Tex suture. And uh, we'll just leave that uh, for later. Uh, that will actually support the side of the capsule bag as it is pretty well as I inject my toric single piece acrylic lens into the capsule bag. 
I rotate that into the position I marked at the beginning of the case. And when I tie my suture here, I'm going to do a, a 2 one, one knot and try to adjust the tension very carefully so it's just tight enough to secure the inferior capsule of bag here without pulling everything over. Uh, I rotate the knot into the eye. And you can see there's a little slack. I'm going to pull from inside on the eyelet and tighten that up a bit so that suture lies under the scleral surface at the base of that scleral groove where it's never going to create problems for this patient. Um, we close conjunctiva and the case is completed. Uh, the lens is well centered. The next day in the office, the patient's vision is 2025 uncorrected and she's seeing for the first time clearly in many years. Thank you for your attention.